Hi there. So in one of my recent videos, I presented the Benedict Library. Now, one of the facets of that library was the ability to access dictionary, Python dictionary items using attribute access, like dot notation, instead of the standard style using the square brackets, right? And then we specify the name of the key in a string inside those square brackets. Now, some people complained about the lack of purity here and correctly pointed out that a gentleman by the name of Raymond Hettinger had added this to core Python, but that it was later retracted. So his MR was merged, but then was actually pulled back out of Python for kind of purity reasons and some technical reasons, uh, which I'm not gonna debate here, right? So I am, I'm gonna leave that debate up to the experts and just go with whatever is available in Python. So I'm not gonna debate it, but I think that Raymond's point was a very pragmatic one and was a very good one. There was a real reason, practical reason, why he wanted to be able to do that. And it had to do with dealing with JSON data in an ad hoc fashion. Now, one of the things as a side note, if you haven't seen any of Raymond Hettinger's videos, he has quite a few of them on YouTube mainly at Python conference talks and a few others as well. I really suggest you look him up and take a look at these videos. They are usually extremely informative and very interesting to watch. So Raymond has been involved with Python development as a core developer for many, many years, and he has a lot of good points. So when he made the point that he really wanted to be able to use attribute notation to access dictionary items, I kind of listen, I wanted to know why. The basic reason is, as I said, for dealing with JSON. Now, in Python, normally when we deal with JSON, JSON kind of looks like a Python dictionary, and certainly the data types that it supports, things like lists and objects, you know, sub-objects, nested objects, integers and floats and booleans, all these have equivalents in Python. So a natural way of taking JSON, which is really just a string of characters, and putting it into a Python object that we can work with, well, dictionaries make a lot of sense. And let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm gonna copy paste the code from the notebook, which is linked below in the description. So here we have this JSON object. It's just a string, right? So we can't really do much to access, let's say, the center coordinates of the circle here inside that string. We're going to have to do something that something is called deserializing. We're going to deserialize the string into a Python object, and now we can access the data in it. How do we do that? Well, usually we use the JSON library, the JSON module that's available in the Python standard library, and we do a load string on it. So when we do that, we now have a dictionary. Data is a dictionary. So we deserialize that string into a dictionary. Now, if I want to access, let's say, the center coordinates of the circle, how do I do that? Well, I have to really write using the dictionary notation. So I have to say data, square, brackets, circle, center, x, and then same thing here, data, circle, center, y. Right? This is when you're dealing with lots of JSON and lots of nested structures, this is really not ideal, right? It, it's not very pretty. You've got to kind of read that. It looks heavy, it looks cumbersome, and it is cumbersome, right? But it works. What we would rather have is a way of accessing this using maybe attribute notation. So something like data dot circle dot center dot x. So that was the real impetus behind Raymond's approach here. And since we're deserializing JSON into dictionaries, well, let's, you know, allow us to essentially get data out of dictionaries using dot notation. And that was, of course, the actual issue is that this kind of approach, what he wanted for JSON, extended to dictionaries, and not everybody was happy with it, and eventually it got pulled out. So how can we deal with this? Well, certainly one way we can do that is by using Pydantic. So let's see how we would do that in Pydantic. So we'd import our base model, and now we're going to have to create a class. Let's call it data. It's going to have two properties, circle and rectangle. 
But circle is going to be another pydantic object, another pydantic model, and it's going to have two properties, center and radius. And then center itself is going to be another pydantic model with two properties, x and y. And then same thing with rectangle, it will have top left and bottom right as properties, and each one of those is also going to have to be a pydantic model that's going to have these x and y attributes here, just like we have for center. So one way of doing that in Pydantic, we would just go ahead and create our data, which has circle and rectangle, which are themselves Pydantic models. Circle would have center, which itself is another Pydantic model called coordinate, x and y. It has a radius just as an integer. And then the rectangle has top left and bottom right coordinate types. Okay, so we can do that using Pydantic, and now we can load the data up into a Pydantic object like so. We just do a model validate JSON, we pass it the JSON data. And now we have an object where we can access the elements of the object using attribute notation, using dot notation. So we can say data, so if we want the center, and I'm just going to copy paste, I'm not going to retype everything. But we just say data.circle.center.x, etc. So that was the goal. It was it to be able to query JSON data using or query or access JSON data using this kind of notation as opposed to this kind of notation. So the Benedict library does this by essentially extending how you can access elements of Python dictionaries. There was another library that's no longer maintained. It was uh, retired some years ago called the Atter Dict library, which kind of gave you the same thing. And there were kind of issues with it. Same thing with Benedict. And I'll come to that and you know, I'll circle back to what some of those issues were. But the real question here is, can we access JSON data using this kind of approach, this kind of notation? And of course, the answer is yes, we can use Pydantic. But Pydantic is a pretty hefty library. You've got to learn it, first of all. Then it has to be packaged up with your particular Python application. And it may not be something that we want to use all the time, especially if we're just dealing, you know, with, let's say, ad hoc JSON. We don't want to have to model the JSON out. It's a lot of work. We don't want to do that. We just want to be able to access some data in this JSON object. Can we do that without Pydantic? Yes, we could have used Benedict, but that's not going to happen if people don't like that approach that mucks around with how you do dictionary access. It's not available in Python either. So what can we do? Is there a solution? And the answer is yes, there is. There is another object called simple namespace, and we're going to import that. That's part of the standard library. So from types, we're going to import simple namespace. And what we're going to do, so simple namespace, basically you can say s equals simple name space. I'll just show you an example, a space. And we'll just say a equals one and then b equals, and let's say do another simple name space. And then we'll pass um, x equals one and y equals two, like so, okay? So if we do this, we have this object right, this namespace object, and we can access now these things via attributes. So we can say s.a, sorry, not s.1, s.a, like so. Or we can say s.b.x, for example, like so. So we have attribute access to these elements, to these, essentially, these keyword arguments that we passed in to the simple namespace. So the idea is that we are going to use that approach to deserialize our JSON object into these simple namespaces. And we can do that because the load string function in the, for JSON in the JSON module has an object hook. Now, I'm not going to go into exactly how this works here. I have videos on that in my Udemy courses. I may even have some videos on that in this channel as well. So I'm just going to show you how it works. It's actually very, very simple. We do a JSON load. We're going to load this JSON data, which was our original JSON object, but we use this object hook. So basically every time 
JSON is, lo is loading our string, when it encounters an object, when it encounters this kind of thing here, these curly braces, either this one here or even this one here, which has two attributes, circle and rectangle, it's going to receive it as a dictionary and we're going to essentially explode the keys and values of that dictionary and we're going to pass it to a simple namespace. That's all we're doing. And of course, it will take care of doing this recursively for us. So when we do that, you can see data is not a dictionary, it's a namespace. And its attributes are circle and rectangle. And then circle is itself another namespace with two attributes, center and radius. And then center is itself another namespace with two attributes, X and Y. So now that we have that, we can now we essentially dig into this JSON data using attributes, using dot notation, data circle center x, data circle center y, like so. And we get the same thing as before, right? So this was really very, very easy. All you need to do is use this object hook and use the simple namespace. And now you get attribute access to your entire JSON object. Now there is a snag and we saw that snag when I was looking at the Benedict library, but what if the JSON keys contain dots, for example, or contain spaces. Those are perfectly valid for JSON keys and they're perfectly valid for Python dictionary keys as well at the same time. But of course, it's not gonna play well with this kind of attribute notation. So what happens? Can we actually pass keys that have dots or spaces in them to the namespace, to the simple namespace? And the answer is yes, we can. Let me show you an example. Let's take JSON data, right? So you can see these keys here have a dot in them. And we can go ahead and take this same code we had before and we can run this. And if we look at data, you can see that the namespace does indeed have a, a value here or a name here of a.1 and it has another attribute here called a.2. Now, we cannot recover it using this kind of notation. That's going to give us a syntax error. That's not correct. However, not all is lost because we can use the getAdder function. So when we hit those kinds of keys with, let's say, a period in them or maybe a space in them, and I'll show you that in a second as well, then we can just go ahead and use the getAdder. And then here for the name of the key, we just pass in the a.1. That is going to work. That is going to return to us this namespace over here. And now we can take a look at the dot x. x is a perfectly valid you know, set of characters that we can use in this attribute notation. So this will work perfectly fine. And of course, if you do this, and let's just go ahead and replace the periods with, let's say, a space like so, we can load the data up. And then if we look at data, you can see that this particular attribute here has a space in it. This one has a period in it. And we use the same technique. We can get to A1, but now it's a space, right? A1 and then get the X value out of it. And there you go. This is a very simple and a pragmatic way to clearer code when dealing with JSON data. So essentially what's happening is that we are not deserializing to a Python dictionary. We're deserializing to an actual object. And that object has attributes that are based on what was contained in the JSON data. And it's done via this simple namespace. All right, so if ever you find yourself in need of being able to quickly deal with a JSON object and quickly be able to access properties in here without using this kind of notation. If you want something that looks cleaner and is easier to read, then this is the solution over here. All you need to do is this. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.